You are Locked On Lakers. Your daily Los Angeles Lakers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Locked On Lakers for Wednesday. Brian Kamenetsky, Andy Kamenetsky. Um, it's, it's still stuff. Like, they're still throwing stuff at us, uh, Andy, despite the fact that it's August. Summer League's winding down, apparently, I've been told. Uh, but we got some some fresh things to look at. Chris Haynes of Yahoo Sports with some interesting free agent news uh, that we'll get into here in a minute. But we'll start with uh, the leaked schedule. It's schedule season, Andy. Everybody loves schedule season. And yeah, stuff's absolutely, leaking. man. Uh, it means it means that we got deets, and it means that we are getting closer to the actual games. Um, and so the Lakers, not surprisingly, uh, feature prominently in the early leaks for the season schedule. Not surprising, they will be part of the opening night schedule on October 19th. They'll open the season against the Golden State Warriors at Staples Center. Um, then the Phoenix game will be, they'll, they'll host the Suns on three days later, uh, on the 22nd and Andy Christmas day, quite possibly the least surprising scheduled game in the history of the NBA. It's the Lakers versus the Nets at Staples center. Yep. It is death taxes Lakers with a marquee game on Christmas at Staples and our wives pissed at us. Yes. But there was a 0% chance that was going to be against any other team. Correct? No, I like, know, I I'm not saying I'm surprised by it. I'm just well, saying I'm, but I'm asking our, like I'm not overstating the like there was literally a 0% chance that there was going to be Lakers versus anyone else. No. No, that felt pretty predictable in a good way. <laughs> um yeah, but you're right. Nobody likes our jobs at our houses. Um nope. It's an interesting slate. I mean, obviously, we'll get, you know, I think the schedule's uh, supposed to come out Friday. Um, so, you know, it'll be something we talk about, sure, for sure, on, on Monday's show. But um, it's an interesting slate of games because you know, all three of these teams are in different places. Um, you know, Brooklyn, to me, is the only team that I would put as a, a slightly higher favorite to win a title than the Lakers. Um, Phoenix is interesting because, obviously, they just, you know, did what they did in the finals and all that. But um, I think that the Lakers probably would have beaten them. And I'm not sure they got worse, the Lakers, I mean. And then Golden State, um, and let's start here. I don't think Golden State is going to win a title this year. They could be really good. I guess they could be pretty ordinary, depending on who gets hurt. But I'm, I am so interested in seeing what is going on with that group. And I want them to be good. Yeah, I was going to say... the. I want Golden State to be really good because I think it's just more fun for the league when that team in particular is really good. But they are also a big time I need to see it team. Because I mean, you may remember Brian heading into last season before Clay Thompson even got hurt for the second time, but was coming off that first injury. I was not in the camp of people who automatically had them back in the mix. Like it felt really presumptive to me. And I remember you and I talked a lot about that. And again, that was before Clay got hurt. Right before, um, I guess it was either the free agency or the season actually opening. That's when they brought in Kelly Oubre and all that stuff. So now you have Clay, who's an incredibly important part of what they do, mm -hmm. two seasons removed from being healthy. And, you know, I want Clay to be good. You and I, you know, have a relationship with Michael Thompson. We worked with him for years at 710 ESPN in LA. We love Michael. We, we love the Thompson family, even though his wife, for reasons we don't need to get into, we fear hates us. It's nothing we did wrong. I don't it's something think Michael she did actually wrong. does, but I wouldn't blame her. Right. Yeah. <laughs> in, long story short, we created a technical issue for Michael Thompson in his in his home for a previous show we used to do, and yeah. uh, his wife got unfortunately dragged into it. She's a lovely lady. She didn't deserve it. But anyway, we root for the Thompsons. I still need to see it because if Clay Thompson is not at that level or anywhere close. I think this is a team that is very similar to what they are last year, which is an eight-ish seed. Yeah, because – and even if they are, I'm still – like the, the – I mean, Clay, Steph, Draymond. I get it. Like that is – you know, that core has done some amazing things. But it's also a core that did amazing things a few years ago. Yes. <laughs> you know, it's, it's been a little bit. It's a couple injuries ago. Steph was remarkable last year. 
Yes. And, you know, I don't, I don't really see a whole lot of drop off there, but Draymond, Draymond is not the same guy no. as he was in the, in the, at the height of the Warriors thing. And, you know, the, you look at the, you know, he, he had a great bounce back year in terms of proving his value and all that kind of stuff. But he has become a guy who offensively, you know, he greases the wheels, he he puts up assists, he gets guys in the right, all that stuff. He's still very valuable, but he doesn't score anymore, and he doesn't shoot. And it's just it's just a different kind of deal. They are putting a lot on Otto Porter being healthy. Yeah, like, that could be a great deal for them. He fits; he's a great fit, kind of culturally and need wise. But I mean, for all the reasons, Andy, that you were a little bit nervous about signing him when we talked about Porter as a potential option for the Lakers, um, a guy who would have fit well, plays defense, 40% three point shooter, all that kind of stuff. He's never on the floor. And, you know, for the Golden State Warriors who have suffered injury after injury after injury to have that guy as an important part, that's tough. And they need they need Wiggins to pop. Like I, I think Wiggins in some ways has actually become a little bit underrated. Just he, he's so associated with what he did not do, you know, as a number one overall pick and, you know, the rigging for Wiggins and all that stuff. Like he's, he's not that guy anymore, but he's actually not a bad player either, but they need him to take it up a notch. They need James Weissman to become somebody that you can keep on the floor. Right. Him, one of the other young guys, like there's just, and this is why, and we'll get to Phoenix here in a second, but this is why I, I consider the Warriors to be a different kind of game than someone else. Like, I'm glad the league picked Golden State because it's a great game. It's got tons of marquee star power. You know, I knock on wood, all three stars for each team. They'll all be healthy. They'll all be on the floor. They'll be as fresh as you possibly can be for a moment like this. But it's also, it's not one of these games that you you look forward to as a, potential Western Conference Finals matchup or something like that. Like, I, it's hard for me to picture Golden State getting that far. And so I don't feel like you're, like, wasting an early matchup on something that you'd like to see just as a basketball fan more for, like, when these teams are really cooking. Um, and so it, it's a perfect, perfect opening yeah. night match. Let's score 160 points each, bomb some threes, and have some fun. Like, I'm excited – about that one. So kudos, kudos to the NBA for getting that one right. Um, the Suns occupy Andy a totally different space that I think is really interesting when you think about where the Lakers are in the West. Um, and so let's let's talk about that game and that team next. Locked on Lakers brought to you by Sweat Block. There are a few things in life they're just not fun to talk about. And one of them is like excessive sweating, just sweating through your shirt, your pants, everything. Andy, let's be Regular sweating isn't that much fun to talk right, about, but let alone excessive. No, right, right, but excessive sweating. Come on, man. Like that—that that is embarrassing, and it is very difficult to pretend that it's not happening. You don't want to worry about it, so that's why I use sweat block antiperspirant wipes. It's stronger, more effective than most clinical antiperspirants. Apply it at night before bedtime. Next morning, wake up, wash, go about your day without worrying about sweat. You can use it once or twice a week. And stay dry the entire time. Guaranteed or your money back. No more pit stains. No more pants stains if it's really becoming that excessive. No more picking out your wardrobes based on what hides the sweat better so you don't end up in all black looking like a waiter while you're at work. Something like that. You don't want it. I'll put it to you this way. If you know another sweat solution that is doctor created, doctor recommended, featured on Rachel Ray's show, tested by firefighters, I'm listening, but until then, check out Sweatblock. Get it today for 20% off at sweatblock.com with the promo code locked on or at Amazon or CVS. Locked on Lakers also brought to you by Theragun. Uh, I am that guy, you know, the 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 insurance commercial where like you get out and like they, they talk about you get up and you make that noise, like, like you know, like you're becoming your parents. Like I'm at that age, everything hurts. And I've actually been using a Theragun for a while now. My wife and I, we've had one for about a year and a half, maybe close to two now. And this thing is phenomenal. It's the handheld percussive device. It releases your deepest mus muscle tension. It uses scientifically calibrated combinations of depth, speed, and power. Um, and it's it's 
quiet for the, the for the work that the thing is doing. It's it's really quiet. Gen 4 Theragun doesn't just feel good. It gets to the source of the pain by releasing tension using that Theragun signature percussive therapy. It goes 60% deeper than vibration alone. And the OLED screen design makes you feel like you're holding something like from the future. Mine doesn't do that. Get the future one. Um, just go to their site and check it out. The Theragun app learns from your behaviors and suggests guided routines. Uh, it's used by 250 professional sports teams and athletes like Real Madrid and uh, Paul George, boo, but you know, he's still an elite athlete. DeAndre Hopkins, Maria Sharapova, hundreds of thousands of customers. Andy's got one too. Yeah, um, it's and awesome. So try Theragun for 30 days starting at only $199. Go to therabody.com slash locked on right now. Get your Gen 4 Theragun today. That's therabody.com slash locked on. Uh, therabody.com slash locked on. Both of us agree, Andy, that the Suns were an awesome story, uh, totally deserving to get to the finals, uh, that the ascension was real, and all that stuff. Correct? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Both of us also agree that had Anthony Davis not gotten hurt, the Lakers actually would have won that series. Yeah, I think they're likely to end up winning that series. Um, if ev If everybody is healthy and if everybody isn't carrying too much of a residual effect, from that quick of a turnaround. Right. Yeah, I think I think the Lakers end up winning that series because the Lakers are a better team. And I think if you're that much better, at that point, the inexperience with Phoenix, that Phoenix had really would start coming through. But it's not the way it uh, broke down last season. I don't think they were a fluke in terms of them having success. Whether you think that they would have lost to the Lakers or not, that doesn't make them a fluke because you, the Lakers were the prohibitive favorite before everybody Correct. started getting hurt to go back to the finals and actually repeat, or if nothing else, maybe lose to the Nets. But the Lakers are considered a championship contender. So if the Lakers would beat them, that doesn't make the Suns fluky. The <laughs> Suns are, I think, an extremely well-constructed team. They are very balanced. Like They don't necessarily have as much explosive upside as the Lakers have, but they don't have a lot of weaknesses either. And they're, they are built in a way where everything makes a lot of sense and I also think it can't be understated, too, how much it means to them to have the owner, Robert Sarver, commit to bringing everybody back, paying that price tag for Chris Paul that eventually may hurt down the road. They brought back campaign, even though there's always a reason to be skeptical that that was a contract year, you know, insanity, right place, right time. Sure, whatever. But it still, they, they needed to right. bring him back, and they did. They needed to bring him back. And I think they are a really credible team. It would not shock me at all if they beat them, if they beat the Lakers in this game, because the mm -hmm. Lakers may still be in more of a figuring out place than Phoenix that just needs to have everybody healthy again and just build off what they did. If you're asking me right now to bet on who I think will go farther in the playoffs, it's the Lakers. But if you're asking me if I can envision a scenario where Phoenix becomes good enough that they could actually beat the Lakers. Even a healthy I, Lakers team. Yeah, sure. I don't think it's impossible. I oh, also just absolutely. wouldn't say it's the odds. Yeah, to be clear, I don't think Phoenix is at all fluky. I agree with I agree with everything that you said. That, you know, that's a really well constructed team. It's, you know, it's the the leadership is there. Guys like Cam Johnson seem to be really finding their footing. Devin Booker is only going to get better. And, you know, they're really obviously very well coached. Um, DeAndre Ayton's only going to get better. Yeah, They've got you're really right. good I mean, defensive wings. Again, JaVale McGee, I thought was a great pickup for yeah, them. You're right. To back up Ayton. You know, guys, he is, like Mikhail, guys like Bridges, Mikhail Bridges are only now starting to, I mean, yeah. these, these are young players. Yeah. And, and I, I do think, you know, the internal improvement there is what makes them intriguing. Um, it'll be a fun game. It, it, it's, it's too really fun. It is not out of the question that the Lakers could open the season 0-2, just looking at, at what they have in their first two games. Those are legitimate teams that are going to be playing Golden State. Um, if they're healthy, certainly has a chance to be a top four sure. or five team in the conference. Um, yeah. A chance. I, I, it's not where I'm putting them. I said they have a chance. Um, but it it is... Uh, it, 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 it's indicative of how, you know, those first few games for the Lakers, people are, you know, even with all that talent, are probably going to need to be patient. I am so happy. I'm presuming the Lakers and Nets won't play before that Christmas Day game. I um, think you wouldn't burn it before that. That would be insane. I, I'm glad the sort of finals preview type thing. Every every team they play, every, every, every each team is going to have you know 25 games or something or whatever it is by the time you get to Christmas. 
I'm very happy we get that because then it's going to be a little bit more meaningful. We can have more kind of the fun conversations, projecting ahead and all that kind of stuff. It's going to be a phenomenal game. Well, you also just get it. You know, both of these teams become better versions of themselves. But because yeah. remember, Brooklyn, their big three didn't play with uh, together much more than the Lakers' big three that have literally never played together. You know, that that Nets team did not have Durant, Harden, and Irving on the floor much together at all. So those guys right. are still going to be – They need time. You know, You're right. It's right. a good point. So, so you, get, you get, you know, 20 to 30 games as a tune-up before you eventually get to this Christmas Day game. It's going to be a lot of fun. I mean, th- this is not just the Christmas matchup that everybody wants to see. This is the finals matchup everybody wants to see. And I'm saying it right now, unless either of these teams – just struggle in ways that you simply cannot paper over. League's going to rig it, so this is the finals. <laughs> I'm just saying it right now. I mean, th- this is what the people want to see. You've got two marquee teams, two marquee cities. The storylines are incredible. You've got LeBron versus Kyrie, LeBron versus Durant. You've got Russell Westbrook versus Durant. You've got Ru- Russell Westbrook versus <laughs> Harden, like you've got all of these different machinations. You've got the Lakers taking on Steve Nash, who a lot of Laker fans still hold responsible for the suffering that they went through almost a decade ago. It ain't fair. It's well, not Steve Nash's fault. entirely his fault, fault but yeah, but, but you know. know. There is still a hashtag never forget thing going on with a lot of Laker fans who were resentful at Steve Nash that he had the audacity to take the final year of his contract as opposed to retiring. So. A lot of storylines with that one. Again, yeah. league's going to make it happen. Uh, that 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 Andy would solve this long-standing. You know, is it a problem? Isn't a problem of the league's ratings in the finals? No, I, I think that series would pull a if, decent. If number. that doesn't rate, I think we just all have to agree. America and frankly the world no longer cares about basketball. They, they've moved on. <laughs> yes, um, <laughs> but it is. <laughs> we've got, we've gotten basketball out of our system, and we've decided we are ready for something else. Hockey, ahoy! Here we come. No, let's not professional go lacrosse. Um, it just it is. It's fun to have, like. I, I know they're going to play some crappy games against crappy teams or whatever. But as far as I know, right now, Andy, the only games the Lakers are playing are marquee games against marquee teams. And uh, I am excited to see this happen. Um, free agency is back in the news. The Lakers with some interesting workouts that they've they've had with some guys who are available. Uh, we'll dig into that as well as some of the other names that they might want to look at to fill out the roster. We'll do that next. Locked on Lakers brought to you by Built Bar, the best tasting protein bar ever. Bars covered in 100% chocolate. They are soft. They are easy to chew. They are not an all-day chore that you have to take a day off from work in order to eat one of them because it's just like they're so, so unchewy. It's disgusting. But Built Bars. <laughs> unchewy. Unchewy, yes. They're, they're so bad. You develop, you create a new word to describe them. Unchewy. I coined it today. Built Bars, though, they're not unchewy. They're chewy and they're healthy. They're great for it's health conscious people. Unchewy. Yes. Whether you're trying to maintain or lose weight, but you still want to eat something that tastes awesome, low calorie, low sugar, high protein, high fiber, keto friendly, and they taste awesome. You've got the 12 original flavors like raspberry, coconut almond, salted caramel, banana bread, new flavors like cherry barcia, lemon almond, cheesecake, cookies, and cream. Again, Great taste combinations. You will never feel bored feeling like you're eating the same thing over and over. With Built Bar, so go to BuiltBar.com, use the promo code LOCK15, get 15% off your first order. Again, promo code LOCK15, 15% off at BuiltBar.com. Lockdown Lakers also brought to you by Bet Online, the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your sports action. Baseball season's in full swing. You can track all the action at Bet Online. We're getting near the stretch run here, Andy. Mm-hmm. I haven't been paying attention, but it's happening. We're almost at September when I start paying attention to baseball again. Get all the latest news, odds, info for all of your sporting needs, and whether it's baseball, UFC, MMA, the NBA. I don't know if you got excited about all this talk about the schedule that we just had. Maybe you run out and try to put money on that Phoenix game. I don't know if they'll let you yet, but you can try. Do it at Bet Online. Don't sit on the sidelines anymore, Andy. This is your chance to get in the game as teams prep for their runs to the playoffs. Head to the website, use your mobile device today, and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit when you use the promo code Locked On. Again, 50% off welcome bonus on your uh, first deposit when you use the promo code Locked On Bet Online, your online sportsbook experts. This, Andy, from Chris Haynes at Yahoo Sports uh, Sources. 
The Los Angeles Lakers are in search of depth and have worked out Isaiah Thomas, Darren Collison, and Mike James for potential roster spots with Thomas just concluding working out personally with LeBron James and Russell Westbrook. Um, three interesting names, all three point guards. Um, so obviously they're they're clearly in the market for a third, you know, break glass in case of emergency type point guard. I don't have a problem with that. Quick thoughts before we get into like maybe what they should use these final three roster spots on. What do you think about these three guys? I mean, okay, with Darren Collison, I think is probably the best player of the three. If he's still at a at a place, you know, level that we last saw him. Um, and he, but he it's would, hard think, to know because it's basically been two years since he yeah, played. It's been two years, but he was the most complete player, uh, particularly on defensively of the of the Correct. three names there. There's a part of me, Brian, that would be uh, very, very reluctant to bring in Darren Collison because, if you recall, the Lakers whined and dined him. They took him to a game trying to recruit him. They seemed like they thought it was going to be happening. And then Darren Collison snubbed them, Brian. He yeah. snubbed them and he left them hanging high and dry. I said many times, if I were Jeannie Buss, I would have invoiced him. For well, the she meal still could. Like, him, you know, the they drinks? could sign him and then take it out of his first paycheck. Oh, absolutely. I'm petty like that. You know, I mean, look, if Collison looks like the guy that he was when he left off, he could actually be pretty useful to bring on this team. He was a really good defender. He can get to the rim. He can distribute. He's a good outside shooter. I'm sure he would love playing in, you know, in L.A. He's from the IE. So that would be great. I just I have no idea what he looks like. Isaiah Thomas, I don't get it. I, like, I mean, I get I really, it. I get it. The guy, you know, averaged thirty points a game in the NBA at one point, but I don't get it. Going on five seasons ago, yeah, and multiple you know, injuries ago, and he's not going to play that kind of role on this team. He still, I mean, I don't care how much better shape he's in, he can't defend. He couldn't defend at his peak. No, um, I, I, I agree with you. I, I don't understand. I mean. The, I mean, I would love to see IT have a chance to play in the NBA and finish his career kind of on his own terms. Because, I mean, talk about a guy who earned his way. Second round pick. He's, f what, 5'9"? Five 5'9", nine, five nine, which is probably a lie. I mean, we, right. you and I covered him when he was on the team. We're looking eye to eye. I mean, yeah. we're not tall people. Nope. Um, to, to do what he did in the NBA at that size is remarkable. I say the same thing about Nate Robinson all the time. Like, you know, guys like that who can stick and play and be genuinely highly productive players in the NBA at under six feet tall, you are insanely good at basketball. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I would love to see that career kind of finish in a, in a almost like Carmelo Anthony has had that kind of redemption. So you feel better about the way the career ends. But there's, there's no reason to have him on this team. He I mean, have to be here. If you look at it's a waste numbers, of a roster spot. If you look at his numbers, they are dramatically down offensively. I mean, we already talked about the defensive issues. Offensively, they're dramatically down the last few seasons. Since that big year in Boston that you talked about, 2017 season, second team all NBA, fifth in MVP voting. He has not shot above 41% from the field. And outside right. of the 2020 season with the Wizards, where he shot, I think, 40 or 41 percent from behind the arc, he has not been above 33 percent rounding up. Right. From and, three. and some of that's health. But like I, I, at the same time, you only recover so much. Right. And, and also you, and too, he's gotten older. Another bad sign in terms of what was happening, you know, during these brief stints he's had in the league, his turnover numbers are way up which signals either more trouble navigating through defenders, getting stripped, or the, like, the lack of health of explosion affects the ability to offset it's size. Like, not. The only reason, I mean, not to be a total cynic, the only reason this would really make any sense to me at all would be if LeBron feels bad about the narrative that he shipped IT out of Cleveland to the Lakers, ironically. Like, that was his doing. Everyone right. remembers that, that wants shot. To let him, wants to give him a shot. Right, yeah. like, like he feels bad for either his involvement in it or his perception of involvement in it. Because otherwise, it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't even make the, uh, sense for Ice-T. He's not going to play. No, he's not going to play. Um, the guy, honestly, that I think makes the most sense, and this is, you know, to some degree, you have to decide, like, what do you want from this spot? Like, you know, from all the remaining roster spots. And I think to some degree, I always look at it, you know, you're talking about the end of the bench. I think you can make an argument for, 
maybe one guy who's kind of a developmental player at this point, you know, somebody with a little bit of, a, of athleticism or just a, a, a lockdown type young defender who with zero offensive skill, but you could put on the floor for just defensive purposes for us, you know, one possession or whatever it might be, um, you know, to, to inject a little bit of youth uh, and athleticism in it as a developmental player. I think you could make that argument now that the roster is more filled out or it's a matter of finding somebody who's good at a specific thing. And while Collison, like you said, is the most accomplished of all these guys, I'd be really wary of somebody who has not played for two years. And, you know, it, I, I just... It, it never dawned on me that they'd even be working him out. <laughs> I'm no, being honest. It's crazy because it doesn't sound like that long ago, but, like, you know, I had forgotten. I remember talking about it. Like, that Collison saga, you know, the, the 2020 season took so long to play. I forgot yeah. that was a thing. Yeah, uh, and it was a huge deal that was overshadowed by the nine thousand other big deals that happened that year, um, and I, the guy I honestly of that crew that I'd feel best about signing is actually probably James, who did a couple decent. He had a couple decent games with the um, with with the Nets last year near the end of the year, but has played very well in the Euro League with I think you know CSCA Russia. or whatever they are in Moscow. Um, he's put up really good numbers there. And so he's been playing a ton at a high level. And I think is somebody who kind of fits best into that. You're not going to play much, but if we need to play, you can go out, credibly run the offense. You're not a name. You're not somebody that anybody's going to look at like, you know, when is, what are they going to do with Collison? What are they going to, I wonder if they're starting to get to a place where you have almost kind of too many guys for your rotation who are names that at least externally, like the expectation is they're supposed to play. Um, and for, you know, when everyone on the team is on a one year deal, we talked about this last week, they've kind of restored a decent balance compared to what they had last season. I'm not sure unless Darren Collison in this workout was way better than Mike James, in which case Godspeed. Uh, rich just get richer here i probably if it's a tie i'd probably take the guy with the lower profile who's played I, more i mean honestly the if we're starting to look for guys that could fill out the roster the names i'd be more interested in um and he's been linked to the lakers before most recently by mark stein in uh one of his uh substack newsletters that said before everybody should subscribe to james ennis yeah um he's a switchable two three wings like six six He's coming off a career best season from behind the arc, granted without a lot of uh, volume. He's never been a volume guy, but he's uh, 36% on his career. He's credible enough, and he's a solid defender. And the Lakers do not have a lot of really good wing defenders. Like, that, that is an area, like, as far as guys that you look at and say small forward, because Kent Bazemore is a little undersized, THT, Maybe has it in length and utility, but he has not proven as a as a defender yet. Trevor Reese is getting a little bit too old for that. And LeBron can be whatever you want, but that may not be where you want to put him. He's the guy that I think who's out there right now. You can get him for, I think, a, a veteran's minimum. That Maybe. to me I mean, he's clearly clearly you can't yet because I, I think uh, I think he's he's one of these guys that's Holding he's possibly right. gettable. He's right. possible. I think when the, he's one of these dudes, it's like, okay, I can sign for a veteran's minimum now. I could sign for a veteran's minimum in a month. Um, I'm going to see, is there somebody who can fit me into 3.5 or right. 4 million or whatever it is? He'd be a great fit. He would as a great, if they just signed him on the first day of free agency, I'd have been happy. Yeah. If they could I mean, sign you, him on the last day, I'd be ecstatic. You and I actually uh, did a show about guys who could have been uh, gettable in the Lakers price range, and he was one of the guys I focused it in on. Uh, Paul Millsap has been talked about. I mm -hmm. I think he makes some sense for this team. I, I was expecting them to re-sign Wes Matthews, so by definition that means I'm kind of surprised that they that they have not brought him right. back. Um, I think I'd, he rather, actually I'd rather have Ennis than Matthews, but I can see both. Well, I but I would rather have Ennis or Matthews than any of the guys Chris Haynes reported them working out to be. Um, yeah, and you know, you you mentioned Matthews, you mentioned uh, Ennis, Isaiah Hartenstein, and uh, Harden is a, is another name. I don't know if they could get, but you know, a young, athletic, big blocks a lot mm -hmm. of shots. You know, kind of fills a different role. Um, you know, fouls a ton, but he fills a little bit of a different role. I he's another guy that. All the Lakers can offer is a minimum. If he wants to sign for the minimum, he can do that in three weeks. Um, but 
the other the, the other interesting note here in uh, Chris Haynes's reporting is that the Lakers plan they have three roster spots available. They plan to use two. He says. Uh, presumably one maybe on a backup point guard, maybe another on a wing or an extra big, whether that's Millsap, Hartenstein or, Hartenstein or, or whoever, um, and then leave the last one open. And if that's the case, that means Jared Dudley's not going to be on the team. Yeah, I think that's honestly the way it should be. We both like Jared, and both of us believe that what he brought to the team in terms of leadership the last couple of years, it's real and it matters, and guys like that do matter. I don't think the Lakers have the luxury of keeping a spot for somebody like that who is at this stage of his career. And honestly, they shouldn't need it for a team that is this veteran laden, this experienced. And you know the, the type of money you're paying your top three guys, those guys should be able to bring a lot of that leadership. And then from there, you rely on a mellow, you rely right, on you got Carmelo Ariza. Anthony, you got Trevor Ariza. Right. Exactly. Like you you should not need Jared Dudley in this role anymore. You just shouldn't. And, and we both like the guy, but that that's excessive. It is. And he's I, not I, Udonis Haslam with this organization. No. Like with that type of history. Where no, I mean, like they they literally owe, owe Udonis yes. Haslam money. <laughs> yes. He has done yes. them some favors and over the years. Even at this age, it's frightening to tell you Dean no. <laughs> like, I'm not going to be the one who tells him no. <laughs> he can play as long as he wants to because we're frightened of him. Yes. Um, but yeah, you, you, I don't mind using a roster spot on a veteran emeritus if you if the need is there. The Lakers, they've, they've got some age questions. They've got some injury questions. I, I would like to see them use roster spots on as many playable rotation guys as possible or, like I said, Take an extra roster spot on a developmental player, yeah, and and see if you can use that scouting department that's been so good, um, and and try to do something with that. Uh, Garrison Matthews is another name that I wouldn't totally object to them signing. The guy who was with the Wizards last year can shoot the ball a little bit. Um, all right, we are host. He does. He <laughs> he might need to learn that skill <laughs> depending on uh, whether or not he gets picked up anytime soon. So. Um, yeah, still a lot of stuff to look forward to. The schedule's coming out. Maybe see some more leaks about that. Uh, maybe some free agent news coming out. We're going to get some some more of those previews and scouting reports of players that have joined the team. Uh, we'll get those coming to you as quickly as we can arrange them. And sign up for Lockdown Lakers on YouTube. Really appreciate it. See everybody tomorrow.